They are literally playing Settlers of Catan. It is literally <laughs> saying, do you have any wood? I will trade you wheat for wood. He's like, no, I don't need any wood, but I need sheep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Welcome to the Bible in One Year podcast brought to you by Two Brits and a Bible. If you like the idea of a casual yet meaningful chat about the Bible with a couple of mates, this could just be for you. Today's day 131, covering 2 Chronicles 2, 3, 4, and 5. If you need a brief overview of those chapters, they're in the description. Well, oh no, hold on. Well, you lovely people, I want to start by bringing something from yesterday. <sighs> now, that was meant to be French. The reason it was meant to be French is because... I, I knew it was French. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't think it was very good. Um, the reason it was meant to be French, and this could even just be more insulting, because we had four downloads on one of our episodes from Quebec, which, of course, is Canadian, but they're like French Canadian, and so they speak French. So, um, yeah, thank you for those Quebecians. I'm not sure if that's what you're called. The down- well, I mean, you live in Canada, so you're the only one who'd have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Quebecites. <laughs> Quebbers. Quebbers. Quebes. Anyway. Quebes. Uh, Quebes. So I think that you have... Poss- oh, no, 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 you've got some stuff. Yes. I was going to pull yeah. across a couple of things. I ran out of a bit of time yesterday. We Yesterday's readings ended up in two Chronicles, but we kind of finished the, the end of the day on one Chronicles. Yeah. It was starting here in 2 Chronicles 1, verse 6, where Solomon is burning a thousand offerings. Um, and it just sort of struck me how later on in Solomon's reign, he's just doing the what's required of him, which we've touched on before. But he started so strongly, started so well, going almost above and beyond what was necessary. And I think it was genuine. I don't think he was doing it, you know, no. doing it to be seen, but just to maintain that rather than, you know, slipping and falling back. Well, it's that kind of links into my first point in some sense. So, you know, he's had these really strong influences. He's had David, you know, his own father, like setting him up, everything. So he's really passionate about his faith to begin with. Right. But then over the course of his reign, he ends up with his thousand wives. Well, however, 700 wives and 300 concubines, I think it is. Anyway, thousand women. Right. A lot of them. I can't remember if it was from today. I think it's from tomorrow's reading. There's even uh, an Egyptian woman that he marries and he knows that she's not a woman of faith. So she doesn't allow him to stay in the same place as him because it's holy and stuff. Anyway, we've talked about this before. Be careful with who you hang out with and who you spend time with because they will impact your faith. And faith is a marathon, not a sprint. So, you know, (laughs) you'll go through good, good seasons and bad seasons. But if you have strong people of faith in your life, your bad seasons, you'll still be reinvigorated and stay strong. Whereas if you have a thousand wives who mostly aren't from the same faith as you, you probably won't. And um, my comment was, uh, he says, I'm going to build, the temple I'm going to build will be great because our God is greater than all other gods. And I just said, it seems like Solomon doesn't necessarily understand that we serve the one living God here. And that could have been the influence of his thousand wives because they're like, oh, Solly, you know, there's, there's, Osiris and there's Ra and there's this and there's that like Mm -hmm. you know he might be like yeah well my god's the better one now or whatever but yeah he's he's confused yeah he's he's got the right track of god is better but he's still acknowledging that the other gods are gods and exist right Right. there's actually there was a witch doctor who we worked with and prayed with quite a lot and one day he gave his life to Jesus and became a Christian which was fantastic we went back to visit him and he still had his witch doctor stuff and his Quran because he was Muslim. And he's like, this is great because now I can heal people with Jesus and Muslim and the Quran. And it's like, oh, you didn't quite get, <laughs> you didn't quite get this, did you, mate? Um, no. But yeah, it's exactly that. Yeah, that's, that's so crazy. And that religious pluralism is a big problem with a lot of Christians. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, so Solomon took a census as well. Um, he took a census and I just said, uh, that's Second Chronicles 2, 17. I said, pretty sure censuses are bad. I think this is also a bad sort of moment for Solomon, right? This mm-hmm. isn't him having faith in God. Because uh, obviously David got cast out for doing a census. And now his son's doing one. Yeah. Can I just say, it looks that's- like you have a green screen behind you. I know it's not, but it looks like a green screen behind you. Like, you're huh. weird. That's funny. Um. 
I quite liked in two Chronicles two, talking about a lot of the materials needed for the the um, the <laughs> stuff, and it's literally he's. Uh, talking to, and I can't remember exactly who it was, um, to Hiram, the king of Tyre, send me cedar logs and I will send you um, stuff like olive oil and wheat and things. It's like They are literally playing Settlers of Catan. It is literally <laughs> saying, do you have any wood? I will trade you wheat for wood. He's like, no, I don't need any wood, but I need sheep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, that's, a great, that's a great shout out to Settlers. Uh, yeah, love that. Solomon began to build the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to his father, David. It was on the threshing floor of Araniah, the Jebusite, the place provided by David. It was also a place of real high significance because this is the same place Abraham went to sacrifice Isaac. Yeah. So just the significance of where the temple is being built and this fulfillment of hundreds of years, right, going back to the earlier patriarchs, just freaking awesome. I love it when I discover these new things as I read the Bible. Yeah, it's fantastic. Isn't it? And we've harped on about it before. It's crazy to know that we've both obviously read the Bible before because we did a Bible in one year. To go through it again, how much new stuff is jumping out. Like, yeah. it's just banging. Oh, it, unbelievable. Mm. Not going to lie, mate. I ran out of a lot of stuff to say about today's oh. episode. Uh, to begin, so I yeah. utilised my Faithful Apologetics in Africa Bible quite a lot. One of them was referencing how it was actually so much time and attention and love and care and everything went into this because the temple was a place where you could go to meet God. It was a place where God dwelt. It was his dwelling place. It was his, it was the temple. Mm -hmm. These days, we don't have that because our body is the temple. And actually, do we look after ourselves, treat ourselves physically but also emotionally and mentally so many people like just beat themselves up and are so down on themselves for either the way they look the way they talk anything like i'm not good enough i'm not worthy actually no you are a temple for god and you need to start treating yourself like that because the amount of time and care and effort and money and everything that went into the the temple that solomon built that david had designed which then when god dwelt in it it was his acceptance of this place as his dwelling place we should be treating yeah. ourselves like that on every level as yeah. well stop yeah. beating yourself up and honestly the temple that solomon built is imperfect whereas god took time to knit you together in your mother's womb you know i forget where that is in the bible that's a direct verse and um we also that's a good reminder of how we treat others yeah like christian or not like all of us have the imago day right the image of god so we should treat everyone with loving kindness and particularly other Christians within the body of Christ. Just understand that when you speak to another Christian, you're literally talking to an active living temple. For God. <laughs> um, it's really cool. Uh, but talking about the temple for a minute, he began building it on the second day of the second month of his fourth year of reign. So that tells me it took three years of organization and planning the patience you would have had to have on top of all the help he had from David planning out the weight of the cups and everything mm. and the weight of gold. He overlaid the ceilings and uh, beams and door frames with carved cherubim. This is from Enduring Word, one of my favorite websites while I'm doing this with you or all of you. The cherubim are a reminder that we worship God with all of his other creations. It's really cool um, to think about the cherubim on the walls as that. Solomon is also in some senses as nearly as generous as his, his father David because he amounted so much weight of bronze in the temple they couldn't be calculated. So David donated a ton of it, of gold and silver. Solomon donated so much bronze that you didn't even know how much. Yeah. And then again, enduring word, a little reference to Jesus. You know, Jesus says, give generously. Don't even let your left hand know what the right hand is doing. And in the uh, apologetics, it said Solomon's left hand didn't know what the right was doing. He literally couldn't even measure how much generosity he'd given. That's cool. That was a really cool little nugget. And then I think we both had something about the temple of God being so filled with the glory of the Lord that normal worship couldn't even go ahead. Yeah. So, you know, just remember that when God shows up, you forget about man. Yeah, very true. Very true. It's really cool. Like it, man. The little things that I had was just it's important to finish what we begin. These this were plans that have been seen to fruition. Don't start something and then veer off, finish it off. Um, yeah. So, yeah, well, tomorrow's readings at 2 Chronicles 6, 7 and 8. So why don't you be free to pick up your Bibles, get reading? In the meantime, please consider joining us on social media at 2 Bits in the Bible and sharing this with someone to help spread the word of God. 